right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Big Time Hoops, the podcast. I got my main gear on because we got the main point guard joining us, the top team in the American East right now. Just got a couple more wins over the weekend. We got Dorstar joining us. Dor, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. My first question, because I always I like to ask this question with the international kids to find out how how bad us Americans are butchering names. So. Door star is what I hear on the broadcast. That's what I hear your coaches and teammates call you. How close is that to the actual pronunciation? Is that how it's correctly said? Yeah, it's pretty close actually. It's it's right. It just we pronounce like the R different in my language, but that's like the right the right um pronunciation, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Just just wanted to make sure because I know sometimes we just we just we butcher names really, really bad. And I I didn't know if we were if we were getting yours <laughs> correct or not. So I'm glad to know that we've got it right then. That's that's a good thing. But we were just talking before we started recording here. So still on winter break, right? So stuck to just being in the apartment, no classes right now. Um, how's life? I mean, pretty much just practice and games on the weekends right now, or that's pretty much the routine. Yeah, right now this is the routine. So it can be boring sometimes, uh, but it's kind of nice. Just like to practice, play basketball. Um, hang out with the team so it's not too bad I cannot complain at all do you like it more like this do you like it where it's just strictly basketball practice and then nothing really else or do you do you prefer like before because it must be probably less busy than you normally would be right with classes you'd be going to class and um, if, if you were allowed to go out you'd probably be going out and having fun and stuff like that do you prefer it more like this where you can just strictly focus on basketball and classes when it's time or you prefer the other one when you're a little bit more busy Actually, I prefer um, a busy schedule, but I think, um, I don't know if most people do, but when we have school and everything, I feel like um, like time like flies by and then I'm more focused on everything. So it's just easier for me like to, to manage my time and everything. What's it like right now? Because normally during the regular season, it's a game mid- middle of the week and then a game on the weekend. But right now it's just games on the weekend. So... Does that make for a very long week where you're just kind of looking forward to the weekend, just like getting ready to play again? Yeah, I mean, it's very different to play those um, back-to-back games Um, because after those games, I mean, I just learned on my body that it takes some time to recover. So it takes some time to, like, get back into it right away. Um, I mean, but it's kind of nice. We practice, like, the whole week, looking forward for the games. Um, and, and then just like have the games on the weekend. So yeah, for you, the recovery thing is a real, got to be a real concern for you because you play a ton of minutes, right? You play like 37, 38 minutes a game that like you barely ever, ever come out. Right. One of the leaders in the country in, in minutes played. So what's that like playing back to back games when you're playing like 37, 38 minutes back to back? Like, is it taking its toll on you? Um, sometimes I can feel like my legs, like I can be tired, but most of the time I'm not. I feel like I put a lot of work in this summer and this um, preseason to be ready for it. So it's not too bad, honestly. Just like the day after or the two days after that it takes for my body to recover. But when I play, I just play and I don't think about it at all. So coaches will always say, I just want you to play hard. And if you're tired, let me know and I'll take you out. Right. But as a player, you never want to tell the coach, like, hey, I want to come out. Right now with these minutes and back-to-back games, are you like, hey, coach, I I, I need a break. Are you you just going to power through it? (laughs) <laughs> um honestly if i if i would feel like i need a break i would tell coach to sub me out yeah. because i know i can just hurt my hurt my team if i um play bad if if i cannot really move well um but right now i feel like i didn't get to this point yet so i just kept playing okay so yeah i just had two wins this this past week and had the home opener in the pit with no fans but Two uh, two wins versus uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Who do you guys got coming up this weekend anyway? Where, where, where are you guys going this weekend? Um, this week, this weekend we're staying home, actually. We're supposed to play Vermont, I believe. Um, so it's nice to have back-to-back weekends at the home, yeah. at the pit. And what, what's it like playing in the pit? Normally you guys play downtown in Bangor at the insurance center, but uh, I mean, the pit is, is your home court. That's where you guys practice. It's where you guys spend the most time. So what was it like playing actually games that matter on that court this past weekend? 
Yeah, I mean, I love the pit. I, I hope we play there like the whole time. Um, just because what you say, like I practice there every day, you know, I get my shots up there. So it's just nice to like feel it. You know, as I practice, I just like always um, try to like visualize and stuff in a game. So it's much easier and it's much more fun to play there. Yeah, and I would think that that'd probably be a really fun place. That place for Pat, because I think you, you may have played a game, like maybe one game or, or two games in the pit before, right? I think a couple of years ago they did that for a couple of home games where you guys actually played in the pit. What would that be like? Yeah. Would that be a pretty fun environment? You think if that was packed and it was loud and like, would that be a cool little home, home environment? Yeah, the atmosphere is great there. I remember we had our um, semifinal, both my, I think last year and two years ago. And I remember the atmosphere was crazy. Um, our fans are the best. It was so loud and I really enjoyed these games, both of those, those games actually. So this is your senior year here. So we're, we're gonna. I want to go back and kind of go full circle and find out how we got here because I mean you're you're climbing up some of the all time rankings, which we'll get into. Uh, I've had nothing but success since you've been here, but I want to find out how you got here. So we're gonna go back and get to know Dora a little bit and uh, find out how we got to this point. So a native of Israel, right? Born and raised in Israel. Yep, that's right. And what what what's, what kind of basketball country is Israel? I know that they got uh, Tel, Tel Aviv is a is a good professional program, right? That's that's pretty much yeah, all I know Danny. about basketball in Israel. <laughs> so, if you could educate us a little bit on what what basketball is like in Israel growing up, is it is it the sport or what, what, one of the favorite sports to play growing up? I think now it's one of the um, the most common sport in Israel, but back then it wasn't that. Um, common of course for the men's um basketball in israel is very good we have really good teams we have maccabi tel aviv that plays in the euroleague um and other teams that play in the euro cup and other international leagues um for women with the years it's kind of decreased i'm not gonna lie um we do have a lot of great players from the states that come and play um, for the women league, but um, at this point it's not um, at its best. But it seems like it's gonna get to it because there is a plan and everything. Um, but basketball is pretty nice back home. Our national team is pretty good. The men national team, the youth, the U twenty just won back to back um, European championship. Um, and then the men's national team is pretty good too now. In the Eurobasket, they're doing pretty well. Um, and then for the women, we still need to get better, but it's a progress. Like we are very young players that play in the national team, so it's fine. So what, what initially attracted you to basketball? What was it about basketball that, that you were interested in and kind of you know got got you hooked? But what, what was it? What was it? And how old were you when you started playing this uh, this beautiful game of basketball? Um, I think I was around like nine, something like that. Honestly, as a kid, I always played with the boys. So I used to just like play soccer or volleyball or whatever with them. And then one day, I remember my cousin was like, hey, do you want to enjoy me? Like, do you want to go to a basketball practice? And I was like, sure, yeah, why not? And then I remember after this day, I really fell in love with the game and I just kept playing and just stick to the sport. So what's the what's it like in uh, in Israel coming up? Because you know, the the European model is a little bit different than the American model in terms of like academies and stuff like that. So what what was your basketball upbringing like? How, how did you kind of progress and move along uh, in in your basketball career back back home in Israel? Yeah, so I think until I was like thirteen, I actually played with boys. So in the boys league, um, and I played in two teams. So I played for the um, for the boys team and then for the girls team. And then when I turned 13, um, there is a rule that I cannot play with boys anymore. So I was like, okay, I need to go to like a different club, like a really um, good club in Israel. Yeah. So yeah. I moved to one of like the best clubs in Israel. We took a lot of, we won a lot of championships and stuff like that. And then when I was 15, I believe, I moved to the Basketball Academy in Israel, which is like um, supposed to be like the most professional um, training. They like train you to be a pro. 
So I played there for three to, yeah, for three years. Um, and then I decided that I'm going to come to the States and play D1 basketball. Yeah, so that's always a question I'm curious about, too, is like at what point did you become aware of college basketball? Because like I said the, the American model is a little bit different than the European model. So like, when did you even hear about the NCAA and like in, in women's college basketball? How old were you when you, when you found out about that or started watching it? Yeah, so I believe all the international players say that because it always happened um, in the European championship. So I was um, in the U16 European Championships. And then after a few games, one of the scouters from the U.S. um, came up to me and my parents and just introduced like college basketball and everything. So I believe he took my name and put it like Mm -hmm. in the list or something because we said like, yeah, we're interested. Um, So since then, like it was in the back of my head, like I was thinking about it. and then I remember one year later, I decided like, yeah, I watched a little bit of, of college basketball and I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, that's where I want to go. So then again, I started the process with um, with UMain and other um, schools. I came to visit here uh, when I was 18 and I really like it. So I was like, yeah, that's where I'm going. So who reached out to you first? Was it, was it still Coach Barron or was it uh, Coach Amy at that point? That uh, actually was doing. The yeah, work. Coach Barron actually recruited me. Coach Barron saw one of my games. Um, I think when I was seventeen in the U eighteen uh, European Championship. So that's how we started talking. But yeah, it was Coach Barron back then. And then when he said, "I'm from the University of Maine," did you have to go look up where Maine was? Did you have any idea what he was talking about when he said Maine? <laughs> no, but then yeah, I looked it up. <laughs> So had you ever been to the States prior to uh, coming here to visit? Actually, no. No. So it was I'm my first you time. Travel a lot though on the uh mm-hmm. on on the on the national team, right? I'm guessing you guys travel a lot uh all throughout your, your teenage years, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Coolest place you played in, or, or what 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 is what were some of the countries like? Well, who would be Israel's rival when it comes to basketball? Like who who were you excited to go against when it came to being on the national team? Mm. Honestly, any good team, like any team. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to th- to see like where we have like the like the hardest battles. Mm. Maybe Turkey or something. Yeah. Because I remember every year like we played against them. Um, so we play a lot against them. So I would say yeah, and it's always a close game. The time you've been part of the national team is kind of coming up. I mean, you're not you're not that old. You're still you're still young, so it hasn't been that long. But have you noticed a difference in terms of like the resources and stuff that are given, being given like the, to the women's program? Has it gotten better on the national team scene, uh, just in the time you've been there? Um. Or does it still have, does it still have a ways to go? Do we we still got to figure this out. There is still a long way to go. Unfortunately, it's not like in the in the best um, point right now. But it's okay. It's a progress. Um, so I believe we'll get there eventually. If we have a game plan and everything, I believe we will get there. I mean, and the good thing is you had a goal of coming to America, playing some Division One basketball, and you were able to do that through the national team. So you came here. And what was it about Maine? Why did you pick Maine? And were there any other schools that you were looking at before you ultimately chose Maine? Yeah, there were some other schools that I looked at. But it came to a point that um, I had an official visit here. And I believe in St. Francis um, back then. So I remember I did those both, um, those visits. And after I came here, I just really like like the environment, you know, the people, the program and everything. Um, so I was like, yeah, I think this, this is the place uh, I belong to. Did you have one of the uh, players that was kind of showing you around when you came to visit? Was it someone who kind of took you under their wing and kind of showed you around campus and showed you what it was all about? Yeah, actually, she's not here anymore. Um, she was from Italy. Um, I believe her name was Isabel, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, she was my host when I well, came. But she here. did a good job, right? Because I mean, you you ultimately decided Maine, so you like liked what you saw. Did you come here? <laughs> was it the summertime or winter time when you came? Because I, I feel like that could make it. It was winter time. It was like um, in December, I believe. Wow! So and you cold. still chose. You still chose to come to Maine. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, it's yeah. worked out well. It's worked out well since you've been here. So it was, it was a good decision. So prior to actually coming here to start your <laughs> freshman year, what was it like? I mean, I'm guessing there there was a jump going from international ball to American ball and, and playing playing women's college basketball. Mm -hmm. What would you what were there any concerns? Was there anything you were worried about about making the jump? Did you have any doubts? Anything you wanted to kind of get better at before you started your freshman year? Um, honestly, I was just very like thankful to play here and like be on the team. So I didn't expect when I play a lot of like playing time and stuff like that. I'm just like a really like hard worker, so I always put the work in. And like my dream is to be like a professional basketball player, so. Um, I always make sure like I work hard and get better. Um, so it was just like, so, I mean, college basketball, it's so different from European basketball or any type of basketball, I believe. Um, especially like practices and lift here. It's like so much longer, so much harder. Um, so I, I needed some time to get used to that. Um, but I really like it. Like. I really like college basketball. And one thing that Blanca I mentioned when I had Blanca on, she said like one of the biggest adjustments for her was uh, conditioning and being in the weight room and stuff like that. It was stuff she hadn't really done before. Were yeah. you in the weight room? Was the weight room something new for you? And how did, how did you enjoy the weight room and the conditioning and all, all that part of uh, college basketball? <laughs> well, I was in the right room before because I was in, in the um, basketball academy. So we did some lift and stuff and conditioning. But here it's like on another level for sure. Like preseason, we have like five times a week, and conditioning is like very hard. Um, so it was tough, but I really like it. Like I like to work and like get my work working. So I'm I'm always down for that, honestly. So your first year here, you you were recruited by Coach Barron, but he wasn't here, right? He he wasn't even your coach your first year, right? Was it wasn't it uh, yeah. Coach Nashon's first year? Was your first year? So what was that like showing up? thinking you're going to play for one coach and then it'd be a different coach. Was that an adjustment or were you okay with that? Um, I was okay with that because I knew um, Coach Vashon before. I mean, she had Coach Baron recruited me. So she was she was doing the most of the talking and everything. Um, she showed me around and stuff. Um, and I knew she was a good coach. So I was down for that too. Yeah, why not? And when you got here, you, you came into a program that was just about ready to win a conference championship, right? So your freshman year, I think, is the year they won they won conference. So I mean, you stepped into a really good yep. team. Who was there? Blanca was there. Paris was there. Who else was there your freshman year? Who, who else were some of the upperclassmen? Um, KJ, Tanisha, Julie was with us too. Um, Another upperclassmen. I think that's it. We didn't have a lot of upperclassmen. KJ and Paris were, were our seniors, I believe. And uh, so we were a lot of freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, and just a lot of talent. Yeah. What, what was it like? Because he mentioned that you just wanted to kind of come over here and get some playing time and be be part of the rotation. What was it like going from probably getting all kinds of minutes on the national team, playing you know a, a ton of minutes, playing a ton of games, and then coming in and having to kind of like start over, kind of like to, to earn a spot. What was it like for you? Was that an adjustment or were you okay with that? Were you just happy to be part of the team and, and doing your part? I think it was both. Um, of course, I was okay with that because it's like, it is what it is and I need to earn my, um, you know, my playing time and everything. Um, but it also was like an adjustment just for everything. You know, I just came to the States, so... In addition to basketball, I feel like I had to like adjust and adapt to like the culture and like the people, the language. So a lot of stuff uh, were going on, but I think basketball was was, um, was like the thing that like kind of saved me. And like I could like really focus in and just like enjoy it kind of because I had a hard time at the beginning. I remember, um, but basketball was like the thing that always. Um, Helped me get through everything. Yeah, so what was the adjustment like just being in Maine? Because that's a huge culture shock right there, too. Big uh, big weather weather shock to your system, too. So how was that adjustment, uh, just uh, kind of transitioning into a different culture, different country, 
Uh, how was all that? And just being so far from home, Israel isn't uh, isn't exactly next door. That's 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 quite a distance away. So, what was what was that adjustment like for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was hard, especially like the weather is so different because back home. It's so much warmer. Like we don't even have snow. We have only one mountain that sometimes gets snow. That's all. <laughs> um, and here in Maine, it's so cold in the winter. Um, but it's okay. I mean, it took me some time to just like understand. And my language at the beginning, like my English wasn't great. So it took me some time to like understand people and people understand me. Um, but people here are really nice. and. Um, so it wasn't like, it was nice. And then uh, a lot of times too, uh, food, food can be a tough thing to adjust to, right? Being in a different country. Uh, how was the American food? Yeah. Were you okay with the American food? And was it something that you just liked right off the bat? Like, Oh, I'm going to just eat this every day. I like this right here. <laughs> Actually, I really disliked the food at the beginning. I was wow. like, I don't know how you guys eat this every day. Yeah, this I know it's not a common answer, I guess. But yeah, at the beginning, um, I didn't really like it because it's so different. And I used to eat like much, not much, but like healthier food. So a lot of like vegetables. Yeah. Um, we don't really eat bacon or like stuff like that. So it was like, it's very different. That's all. Yeah. And then on top of that, you're getting the door, you're getting uh, cafeteria food, which is French fries, hamburgers, all that type of stuff, too. Like this, I mean, it's not, not a lot of variety. Yeah. They're shoving that stuff down your throat. Like, here, eat this, eat some cheeseburgers. But uh, but I'm, I'm guessing you've, you've uh, kind of grown accustomed to it, right? Have you found some things you like since since, since you've been here? Yeah, no, right now, right now, I like it very much. Yeah, I love <laughs> it. There is no problem. All right, good. <laughs> So you guys went to a conference your, your freshman year. Were you just thinking like, we're just going to do this every year. We're just going to win the conference championship every year I'm here. Was, was that was that what you were thinking uh, after winning the first one? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Our goal every year is to win a championship and make it to the March Madness, of course. This year, I believe we even have like higher expectations to win the championship and win the first round. Yeah, I, we, I was on ESPN we last week. <laughs> I was on ESPN last week, and I was seeing where they had you guys. I think they had you like as a 13 seed or something like that, which still seems a little bit low. I think it should be a little bit higher, but we still got some time to boost that resume before the end of the year here. Um, I was at the, right. the first conference championship you guys won, and I just remember that environment being crazy. It was packed. The fans were actually pretty loud. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you remember most about that game? Like that—that that was a really, really fun environment. Yeah, I remember we had a lot of people in this game. Yeah, the atmosphere was great. Um, I, re I remember the beginning wasn't great, but then, like, as the game, um, like, continue, we played better. And I just remember it was so fun just, like, to make it and, like, win a championship. You know, like, you put the work in for this moment and just, like, to celebrate those, like, is the best thing in the world. So, uh, how'd, how'd you come back from your sophomore year? Because getting that experience freshman year, winning a championship, but I'm guessing kind of deep down inside you wanted a bigger role, you wanted more. So what was the biggest jump from your freshman year to sophomore year to, to get better and have a bigger impact on the team? Honestly, after you win a championship and you want to win another one, you know that you need to do like so much more because it's so much harder to um, win back-to-back -back, back -back championships and just like winning one. So I just knew that I need to um, like get better. So I put a lot of work in this summer, not this summer, the summer back then. Um, I remember I talked to coach um, Amy to see like, what should I do? Like, what would be my role? What do I need to work on? So she really helped me to understand what should I work on this, like on this, in the summer. Um, so I was just like putting the work in and just ready to go for my sophomore year, I guess. Yeah. And what's that like being uh, the champion and then kind of being like the, instead of like chasing a championship, people are kind of chasing you guys and people get worked up to play you because you're the conference champ. So that's a little bit different mm -hmm. being the, the hunted versus being the hunter. What, what was that like as a team sophomore? You're just having like a bigger target on your back. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely harder 
because every team like play, like giving you the the best of them. Um, but it also made us like understand how important every day is, every day to put the work in, to give one hundred percent. You know, uh, when you we need to be like like as a one unit, uh, because every team just gonna give their best against us. So it's very important to just be locked in and every day um, just play at our best. Yeah, I had a very good sophomore year, all conference third team. I did, did my research before I had you on all conference third team as a sophomore. <laughs> you guys get back to the championship game. Um, whenever you guys won the second championship, so you're going back to the NCAA tournament. I'm guessing the first time you were happy to be there. Second time, I'm guessing you guys wanted to actually make some noise, maybe and, and actually and get a win out there. Was it the mindset? Second time winning a championship. Yeah, definitely. I think we even we were pretty close. I mean, not very close, but it was against NC State. And we ended up losing by like 8 or 11. But most of the game, it was around like 10. Like, um, so we were pretty close, not like too close. Um, but it was definitely a step forward than last year. Because my freshman year, we just, mm-hmm. as you said, we were just happy to be there. And it was just like the game wasn't even close at all. Yeah, you guys, it was, you guys played Texas your fr- uh, freshman year? Yeah. And that, yeah, that game didn't go as good. But the, the NC State no. game was more competitive. Yeah. Um, and then also, as you kind of progress, the team's been really, really good in your time there. Um, and you guys always get to play some big non-conference schools uh, early in the season. Um, so you guys had like Duke travel up here. You guys have played Mississippi State, all kinds of big games. And uh, North Carolina, right? You guys beat North Carolina. Yeah, UNC. Yeah, we did. So what what's that been like? Kind of as you've progressed, the teams progressed, and not only you guys playing big time non conference games, but winning some of these games. Like what what what's that like? I mean, the mentality must be like any game we play, we have a chance to win. I'm guessing is how you guys are wired right now, right? Yeah, well, honestly, like personally, I really like the non-conference games because you get to play like against like great teams, the best in the league sometimes. Yeah. Um, so of course, for every game we come ready and we want to like pull this upset. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but um, it just I just love to play against like those big teams. Um, so yeah, I just really like it. All right. And then coming back for your junior year last year, um, didn't quite go probably how you expected on a variety of levels from COVID to injuries to, to everything. Um, what, did, what did your junior year teach you about yourself? I'm guessing that you probably learned something about yourself that you might not have known with all the adversity you faced as a team. What, what's something you learned about yourself uh, from that difficult year last year? Yeah, um, I think... One thing that I learned about myself from that was just like to adapt to the situation. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of adversity back then and we were losing a lot of games and it didn't like, it didn't look good the way we played and everything. And I remember I was so frustrated. Um, but then we had a lot of meetings um, and I had a meeting with Coach Amy to see like where we're standing. So I had to like adapt to, like my role was different than it was the beginning of the year. Um, as Blanca and Fanny weren't playing and other people just um, got injured as well. So I felt like I really had to step up and uh, be even like a better leader than what I was before. And you guys wrote it out. I mean, you guys went on a winning streak and played really well towards the end of the uh, conference schedule. Then we're headed back to another conference championship game. And then this little thing called COVID hit. Uh, what was that like? Like not yeah. being able to even finish up the conference tournament. How how upset and devastated were you? Because you pretty much, that's what you play for every year is to get back to that conference championship game and to have it taken away like that. Like, what, what was that like? What, what, what was your thought process when you found out that uh, it wasn't going to happen? Well, I'm not going to lie. It was very frustrating and I was kind of devastated. We were actually on the bus, like on the way to New York when they tell, when they told us like the game is canceled and we cannot play the championship game. So of course it's hard because, you know, you work hard for those moments, especially. Um, So it was really hard to hear. 
I, I really believe we had a really good chance to win this game too. Um, but you know, sometimes there are stuff like things that are bigger than us. So um, it is what it is, I guess. What was the summer like? Because I'm guessing you couldn't go home. So I'm guessing you were stuck here along with most of the team. Um, but what was it like trying to get ready for a season, not knowing if it would happen? Like how difficult was that trying to stay focused, motivated when you don't even know if there's going to be a tournament or a season waiting for you when school actually starts up or what that's going to be like? Uh, was it a difficult summer or was basketball the easy part, the, the one thing you kind of rely on to kind of get through uh, this this interesting 2020 we had? Yeah, I think the basketball was, was um, the easy part for me um, just because I know what my goal is and um, that I want to get like the best version of me, especially my senior year. So I really put the work in. I um, I practiced with boys again and like um, did a lot of like individuals. Um, so I really put the work in and I just wanted to be ready for my senior year. I, I had a feeling we we're gonna play at some point. I didn't know how how many games or how long the season would be, but I really believe we're gonna play the season. So I was like, yeah, I need to be ready um, and give just like the best version of myself. So when I had Anon and Blanca, they both told me about these uh, these runs you guys were having this summer, where you guys were playing against some of the boys, going out to some of the parks here in Bangor and Orna, wherever you could find a run, and just uh, kind of playing pick up with whoever you could find. Did the boys try to pick on you because you're only listed like at five seven, and then were, were they trying to get a mismatch, try to post you up, and then they learned real quick that they, they they're not going to be allowed to do that? Like, the, what, what was that like? Did you have to tell these boys or show them right off the bat? Like, nah, I'm not having that. It's not how it's going to work around here. What, what what were these runs like for you? <laughs> well, honestly, most of the summer I I spent home, so here I was just like the last two weeks, I guess, of um, August. So most of my playing time with boys was back home. Oh, okay. Uh, but you know, yeah, as always, like when you play with boys, they're always like, oh, you're just a girl, like you'll be easy <laughs> and stuff. Um, but I like the challenge. I know like I'm going to get better from it. So I really like to play just like pick up um, and just um, work out with the guys. Absolutely. And then you had some more good news uh, during the 2020 that Blanco was going to come back and have an extra year. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, what, 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 what was that news like? Because I'm guessing you were just happy knowing that you're going to be able to play this year, but and then you knew you guys were going to be good just because of all the experience other players got last year. But to get Blanca back, like going into the season as a team and individual, you must be like, let's let's roll, let's go, let's go. That must have been the mindset. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, Blanc is a great player. Um, I think she's one of like, if not like the best player in our conference. Um, so yeah, I just, um, I was very excited to have her back on the team. And I know like, that's why we have such big expectations from ourselves because we're really like, we can be really, really good. Um, so we just need to like keep uh, working hard and, you know, and get better every day. Um, what was it like just being around the same group of girls? And, I mean, you got to practice probably longer than you normally would before you got to play your first game because uh, there was a tournament that was canceled, and so you didn't play till like, December. Were you girls getting tired of each other? Were you getting tired of practicing against each other and just anxious to actually play somebody else? Honestly, yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. At some point, we were like, we don't know if it's going to happen, yeah. if it's going to happen, when we're going to play and stuff. And it was just like us, like in between us. So it was kind of hard sometimes. But I think the coaches did a really good job. And we as a team did a really good job as well. Just like staying ready. Like we don't we don't want to get to a point like when we can play and we won't be ready. So we were like, like it is what it is. We just need to be ready, keep working and um, just be ready whenever we can play. So your first tournament, your first games were supposed to be down in, I think, Connecticut, right? With a tournament at Mississippi State, who was number six, I think, preseason. UConn was in yeah. there, and there's another school. Um, and then you find out, like, a couple of days before that it was getting canceled. Did you Were you doubting at that point? Like, once you got that news, you're like, man, like, we might not actually have a season. Like, this might not happen. Was, was there any doubt creeping in, or were you pretty confident, even with that bad news, that there was going to be a season? I still thought we are going to have a season at some point, but – it was, I was very sad. 
I was really looking for this um, tournament and playing playing against those like big teams and stuff. Yeah. Um, so we were like a little bit like down, but then like we just bounced back and be like, okay, we still need to be ready for our next game. So um, just put it like aside. So Providence was the unfortunate team that got to play you guys first because you guys were just so ready to play and just ready to take out some frustration and anger and just wanting to hoop. And you guys go down to Providence, <laughs> beat Providence, beat Rhode Island. Um, were you surprised how well you kind of came out the gate? Because it looked like you guys hadn't lost any time. Like you were kind of like in mid-season form with uh, just how well the team played that first weekend. Um, I wasn't surprised because that's where my expectations, and I think it was – um, like our expectations as, as a team, we just knew like if we, we're gonna play our best, um, we have a really good chance to win the game. And I think the first three games we played pretty well, um, so that's how like we got the win. So I was just like very glad that we're starting off the season like very good. What happened at New Hampshire? What happened down there? What happened? Yeah. Against Ooh. New Hampshire. Yeah, that's, I still, I, it's so hard to like <laughs> think about it again, but um, I think they just, they put off, off guard, I guess. They played harder than us in this game. They threw at us some like different defenses that we didn't, like we weren't prepared for. Um, so we just get to like a close game and Unfortunately, like we lost this game. I think we should have, we should have not lose, but you know, sometimes stuff happens. And I think it was just like a wake up call for us. Just like to be ready every game, bring our, bring our best and just be ready for everything. Yeah, it might not be a bad thing because I'm, I'm guessing, you know, behind the scenes, you girls are probably thinking, let's just go undefeated. Let's just win this whole thing and not lose. But, you know, getting this loss out the way, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can just kind of play. And uh, that resulted in two great home wins this past weekend versus NJIT. Vermont coming up. Looking ahead, you guys are currently on top of the America East. Um, who are you looking forward to playing? Anyone in particular? Or are you just ready to ball out oh. against anybody? Anybody and everybody or what? First of all, yeah, ball out against everybody. But there is one team that we are very excited to play. And, of course, it's Stony Brook. Yep. I think it's going to be a great game and uh, we still have some unfinished businesses to do. So that this is like the game I'm really looking forward to play, honestly. When's that one? I didn't look at the schedule, but it's got to be coming up soon. Do you, do you, do you play every team in the America East uh, one time? Is that how it's working? Yeah, but honestly, this is the last game of the regular season. So it's the end of February, I believe. Wow. So we have like a month to go. Pretty much, and yeah. They, they've they lost, right? Stony Brook's already got three losses in the conference? No, no. They, I think they lost only once. Oh, that Stony might be uh, non-conference so we, Yeah, it was non-conference. So, as like on the, I feel like we're in the first and second place with the same record, I believe. Vermont coming in this weekend. Um, what can we expect? Can we, can we expect a couple more Ws here? Can we keep rolling? Can we keep the wind train moving here? Um, I mean, of course, this is like the plan, but Vermont is a great <laughs> team. You know, we cannot just like show up and expect like to win every like against like any team. We really need to like work out, put the work in, and like be locked in in the game. And um, if we're gonna play our best, we'll be in a good shape to win this game. I believe. I'm excited. I've caught pretty much every game except for the Providence game, and I got plans to sit down and watch some Black Bear basketball this weekend. I'm going to be tuned in. I can't wait. Before we get up out of here, though, I want to hit on some random questions before we uh, close things out. So I was taking a look yeah. on the uh, UMaine website, taking a look at the pro player profile, just going through some things. It says you're listed at five foot six. Is that accurate? Are you actually five foot six? You're a little bit smaller than that. No. No, I want everyone to know. This is a lie. <laughs> I feel like because I just came to the States and you know how we measure height with like centimeters. Yeah. So I had to like, I don't know, try to figure out how much is it um, in your measurement. So I said like, okay, probably like five, six, but no, I'm probably like five, 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 four, five, five. Let's, let's stick with five, 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 five. five. Okay. That works. Um, what else did I have? I had a bunch of random stuff for you. Oh yeah. So 
native of Israel and uh, with these international students, you tend to come over with multiple languages sometimes. Um, whenever you're mad on the court, if, you, if you're upset with something, what language do you resort to? If you're gonna say something that you don't want the refs to hear, what, 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 what language are you gonna speak in? <laughs> well, if I get really mad, of course I just speak my language, which is Hebrew and yeah. no one can understand. So it's really good to like, sometimes if I want to just like, you know, get loose and like, if I'm frustrated, I just need to let it go. So I just like speak in my language. <laughs> Yeah, I had two teammates in college that were from uh, Israel and they spoke Hebrew and I just I could never really? I could wow. never comprehend a single word. I could never figure it out. It seems like a, like a difficult language to I, it's the R's, right? Like it's the R's. Is, there's, there's something about it. It's just it's tough. I feel like I, I could never actually pick it up. I feel like. Yeah, it's the R's and we have another sound, which is like, I don't want to say like it's weird, but it's like <laughs> and you guys that cannot say that. No. Um, yeah, it's a different language. Yeah, yeah it is. It's it's it is. We'll, we'll just go with that. It's it's a tough one. But uh, so anyone who knows, if if you hear Dora out there in the court and she's speaking Hebrew, she's probably saying something bad. She's probably she's probably upset about something. <laughs> if she's resorting to Hebrew, so secrets out. Um, so your your roommates with Blanca, what's one thing that she does that just upsets you as a roommate? Is she a good roommate or a bad roommate? <laughs> um, I think she's a really good roommate. I feel like there is anything she does that can upset me. Um, is there anything that you do that upsets her? Probably I wake up very early. So sometimes I'm I'm loud, I feel like. Because <laughs> usually I wake up at like seven or eight. So I just go to the kitchen and sometimes I'm, I can be like loud. Yeah. That's, that's what happens when you got roommates. That's, those are roommate struggles right there. Um, one, one thing I've noticed in watching the games this year is I feel like you feel like you never commit a foul. I feel like anytime you get a foul called on you, you kind of look at the ref, like, and you always look at the coach and you're, you know, I feel like you never, you never, you never foul anyone. Is, is that, is that safe to say you feel like you never commit a foul? Um, no, of course, sometimes I get a foul. Just sometimes the code, I just disagree with the codes a lot of times. That's what happens. Okay. Um, and when I disagree, I always like either go to the ref and ask like, what did I do wrong? So I know to correct the next time. And yeah, a lot of time I just look at coach Amy and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and yeah. And she looked at me and she, sometimes she's like, yeah, it was a foul. And sometimes she's like, yeah, I don't know why they called that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to to pick up on is uh, just seeing your reaction whenever you get called for a foul. I, uh, I get it <laughs> like that. Um, I've noticed we got two different hairstyles you don't want to play with, either like the braid or the ponytail. Is there a difference in how you're feeling that day based on the hairstyle? Like, is the braid more business or or is it just whatever you feel like doing that day? Maybe I'm looking into it a little bit more than what it actually is. <laughs> I think I think the braid is more business. It's also like more comfortable to play. Um, so now I just stick with the braid. I don't do ponytail anymore. Okay. All business all the time. Um, and the other thing too is I noticed you rock the long sleeves. Is there a reason behind it? Is it, is it because it's so cold here? Is that why you rock the long sleeves under the jersey? Because <laughs> of the temperature? Um, honestly, yeah. The main reason is because I really like to stay warm. And sometimes my hands get cold. I have like a problem. I don't know why. Um, so that's why, yeah, I really like the long sleeve because i can always like um be warm and ready to play makes sense i like that right there as well all right so we mentioned how we just confirmed the height We're actually five five not five six all right so usually one of the smallest <laughs> ones out there and uh so whenever you go to the lane and you try to finish the rim you gotta be creative right like a floater like something off the glass left hand right hand as a small player What's like your favorite finish over a big person in the paint? Like if you want to demoralize someone, how do you want to finish at the rim? Is it going to be a floater? Is it going to be like something fancy with the left hand off the glass? Like what, what's, what's your favorite way to finish at the rim to kind of demoralize a big person in the paint? Um, I think it would be e either a floater. I really like floaters. Um, or just like get like an one somehow, which is very hard against a big person. So, yeah. um, so it's probably like a floater. I really, I really into floaters. What are we looking for this weekend? Give us, give us at least one floater this weekend. First Vermont. Okay. For it. 
Uh, and finally, so you got you got all kinds of talented teammates, right? You got Blanca, who's putting up 20-something a game. Kelly's coming on hot, knocking down threes. The list goes on and on. Mm-hmm. So if you're coming down and as the point guard, you got to set somebody up. Who's the most guaranteed bucket right now? If you got to go to someone for a guaranteed bucket, which teammate are you going to? <laughs> well, it really and the, depends and on the game. And your pick and roll game is nice too, I must say. Like I've noticed that the pick and roll game that you run with the bigs is, is also very good. So you're going to call the number for yourself. You're just going to yeah. shoot or if you got to pass to someone, what's the most guaranteed bucket right now? Mm, well, as I said, it really depends on the game. But if I need to like make a play or go to someone that I know, like it just like it's gonna go in, it's probably would be blanks, honestly. Okay. Yeah. You should have called the. You should just call a play for yourself. Just call a play for yourself. That's that's what you should have went with. No, sometimes I do that. You know, <laughs> like play a pick and roll, but then it's either like me or I, I'm gonna pass it. But I feel like right now, if like we need like a bucket like I would go for blanks for sure okay currently the leading three-point shooter in the conference right now at almost 43 percent so not bad calling your own number right now as well uh door that's that's all I got I really appreciate you coming through here before we get up out of here though I always give my guests the chance to say something if you want to you don't have to but is there anything we missed on is there anything you want to say before we get up out of here um no just like Thank you for having me. I really had a good time here. Thank you. Absolutely. Best of luck the rest of the season. And uh, once the season's done, you win the conference championship, you girls go out there and you win a tournament game. And once everything settles down, we'll just have to have a little reunion. I've had a bunch of black bears on. We'll just have a big black bear family reunion to kind of close up the season. (laughs) If you're okay with that, if I can have you back, if you're all right with that. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds Mm -hmm. good to me. It's going to do it for this week's episode of Big Time Hoops, the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, make sure you're checking out all of our uh, former episodes, previous episodes out there, wherever you get your podcast. And uh, tune in next week for another Big Time episode of Big Time Hoops, the podcast. We'll see you.